It's myself, back before crazy legs, before all them cats, y'all got the moves from me, you know it. Let's dance, let's dance to the drummer's beat, let's dance, let's dance to the drummer's beat. I guess it was 73, and uh, a lot of these DJs, they were basically uh, playing, you know, kind of like a disco club type of thing, you know. A lot of stuff that was being played on the radio, a lot of popular stuff. And out of all of that came this rebel, Cool Herc. He wouldn't play that main album cut. He would play a break from a song inside the album. So it was like beats and rhythms and, you know what I'm saying, his style was, he was like God. The break beat is that part that you look for in a record that lets your God self just get wow. Then as soon as that break beat leaves, you're saying like, ah, oh, it's only a minute, it's only 30 seconds, you know, you want to hear some more. So that's where the hip hop DJs came in and started making that beat that break beat, that stripped down funk, that span longer and longer for you could just get crazier and crazier and crazier on the dance floor. So that inspired me right there. I was like, okay, I got this 15-piece uh, drum set upstairs that I took for since I was eight years old, building up, you know what I'm saying? Now I gotta make room for some turntables. One day I'm upstairs, bam, turntables dropped and broke. So, Aziz, who was one of the original members of the Zulu Nation, he's like, yo, man, Bam needs your turntables. Before he can get the words out of his mouth, I ran in the room, packed the turntables up. I was at the door like this. Where Bam at? Brought his turntables down and let him get on, and he started rocking the house, and, you know, and came one of our little protégés in the family. Jazzy J, Red Alert, Grand Wizard Dead or DST. All of them had their different characteristics that just blew up the turntable. The DJ was the, the source of the energy because it was his responsibility to find the, the music, uh, the selection of music, the what type of rhythms that the people would feel in the audience. And there actually were no MCs, it was just the DJ. We would never get on the mic and start saying a rhyme. The only time we would pick up the microphone is when we would say, um, if he on the green truck outside, please move it. Or, 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 or Jerry, your mother's at the door. And it was a DJ who had to uh, give the rights of passage to the MC to even pick up a mic at, at his set. I was walking down the street, just a humming to the beat, and everybody else was a doing the freak. Then they asked me about another MC. I said a wimp and a wham. I don't give a damn. Look like a jelly, but they call it a jam. You know? <laughs> The MCs were just more or less there to get and get the people involved. Like we would create the crowd participations, you know, all the hoes, say ho, you know, anything that had to do with the crowd was where the MC, the master of the ceremony, got involved. The DJ was the backbone, and we were the arms, the legs, and everything else to make him colorful. And they say the big DJ race, their door is running in first place. From the left to the back, he's out of sight. From the right to the left, he gives the death. If a person wants to get an understanding of how hip hop was back then, the best thing is to look at Wild Style because, you know, that was how it was done. You're not going to get to see Grandmaster Flash, you know, cutting in his kitchen. That wasn't like part of, you know, somebody wrote a skit or something and said, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have him put his turntables in the kitchen. No, they were in the kitchen. A lot of the clubs further down in midtown Manhattan, they never wanted to book no, no MCs or DJs. As time went by and they found out that we were making money, that's when they started booking us. Things started being pushed, getting pushed more downtown. That's when a lot of the punk rockers started coming up, hanging with us and partying among black and Latinos, where everybody thought it was going to be some type of racial violence and this and that. But as Uncle George Clinton said, one nation on the groove. We interrupt this record to bring you a special delivery.